Joe Anderson and Al Klopein of Pure Financial Advisors have the answers to your retirement plan. This is your money, your wealth. It has been said that if you are looking to retire now or in the next 10 years, you're going to face one of the most challenging, most difficult tasks that you'll ever face in your life. Think about it. If you retired 20, 30 years ago, we had the happily ever after because you had the large pension uh, plans. Those plans also carried health benefits. You had shorter life expectancies. And guess what? You might also have Social Security. Today, things are completely different. The defined benefit plans, the big be uh, benefit plans are no longer. So it's up to us to figure out exactly what you need to do. And there's a lot of moving parts. We're going to get into those moving parts today to help you identify what they are so that you will have a successful retirement. Welcome. Joe Anderson here. I'm a certified financial planner, president of Pure Financial Advisors. Also, as always, I'm with the big man, Big Al Klopine. He's a CPA. He's going to help us break things down in just a second. But when you're looking at retiring, you don't want to be fearful. You want to be excited. But you want to make sure that you have the facts in place so that you can make the best decisions possible. That's what's on my mind today. When you're in retirement, you have to take a look at many different facets. It's almost like a jigsaw puzzle because you have to take a look at longevity. You have to take a look at healthcare. You have to take a look at social security. You have to take a look at taxes. There's a lot of different things. When you look at this longevity, taxes, social security, inflation, healthcare, you've got to put it all together to make sure that you have a successful retirement. Let's bring in the big man to break it down. Big Al Clopine. A lot more things, Al, today than ever before that most retirees have to face. And I think they focus on maybe just one aspect of the puzzle where they have to take a look at a holistic view to make sure that they do things right. Well, Joe, it, it is a puzzle. Do you like puzzles? I hate them. <laughs> you do? I hate puzzles. <laughs> You don't sit around Friday night build jigsaw puzzles? No, I do no. not. You know, with the little tiny pieces? Yeah. But you don't even know if it's an acorn, a bush, it's just green, <laughs> who knows? No, I can't stand okay. it. Okay, actually I don't either. But I like this kind of puzzle, right? Because this is all about creating the kind of retirement that you want. So we're going to focus in on some of these puzzle pieces so that you can have the best retirement possible. So right off the bat, let's get into market risk because this is something that a lot of people are concerned about and should be because we're at all-time highs in the market. There's been some volatility recently. It's like, now what? Do I still invest in the market? Do I invest in something else? I want safety, but I need some growth. How do you go about that? So we're going to talk about that. Then let's get into health care uh, in terms of how much money are we, are we going to need for health care. And it, uh, of course, it depends upon your overall health, but we'll get into some of the averages. And then longevity. We're living a lot longer. That's a good thing. But unfortunately now we got to make sure that we have enough money for retirement and we got to get the right social security strategies. Did you know there's over 500 ways to claim social security? We'll try to get into that and give you some pearls of wisdom on how to do that. And uh, then finally we're going to talk about income taxes because with taxes, a lot of you that are already retired realize taxes are a much bigger expense than what you thought they would be. And if you're not yet retired, you want to start planning right now. And Joe, but this, this is the kind of puzzle that I actually enjoy building because this is all about creating the retirement that you want. Right, and here's the problem is that people just will take a look at one aspect of this, right? Markets, all right, here, I wanna build the right portfolio. Or they might look at maybe a couple of different aspects. Here, I'm gonna take Social Security right away. I know that um, healthcare is gonna be an issue, but I want my portfolio to grow. Or they'll say, hey, I really wanna get the claiming strategy right on my Social Security, and I'm really concerned about healthcare, and I do not wanna invest any of my assets. So it's looking at all of these different things to make sure that you have it lined up appropriately, because you can't miss one, because if you do your whole plan or the whole puzzle, if you will, is going to get blown up. Uh, you're going to try to put this piece in and it's not going to fit. You know how frustrating that is when you think it fits and you just cram that thing in there? Don't do that with your overall retirement because the first thing that you have to take a look at is, hey, every investment has risk, Al, and it's just identifying what risk that you want to take because if I don't take any risk at all in the market, let's say, there's a risk of potentially, you know, running out of money. Well, Joe, that's exactly right. And when you think about market risk, it, it's it's really about we, we're at all-time highs right now, and we know the S&P 500, for example, in 2008 went down almost 50 percent, and that's no fun. We don't want to repeat that again. So how do you go about it? So first things first, let's look at spending, typical spending. So this would be uh, just a kind of a hypothetical question. 
How much could you spend in 25 years of retirement if you have $500,000? And this is per year. So if you earn a 1% rate of return, maybe like a government T-bill, maybe CDs, very safe, but you can only spend about $22,000, $23,000 per year. Now, 6% rate of return, it's more like $39,000. It's more than $16,000 more per year by just taking a little bit of risk in your portfolio. And, and Joe, this is, this is where people get scared because they think in retirement, it's, it's well, we, we really need to get more safety because we can't afford the risk. But on the other hand, if we're going to live 25, 30 years in retirement, we do need some growth as well. Right. The confusion comes with time frames. If I'm looking at retiring in five years, your time frame is not five years. It's probably 25 or 30 years because it's the end of life is what you really have to look at. And I get it. Well, I'm looking at retiring. I want to be very safe with my investments. I do not want to lose it to the overall market. But if you have the right investment strategy, and if you take a look at how you should invest your money, I think you're going to have a better um, perspective. Um, a better understanding basically of what you should be doing. So if you take a look at investing, there's some things that you want to do. You want to make sure that you have your goals in mind, right? What is the goal? How much money do I need? And then create the absolute safest portfolio possible to achieve that goal. Because here's the deal. You have to take a look at risk, okay? Risk is a very powerful thing. But risk and expected return are related. So if you're not taking on the risk, you're not going to get the return that you need. You absolutely have to stay invested and then try to use the lowest cost possible. Because I, I, we, Al and I have been doing this for a long time. And just think about this. Let's say you have a million dollars. And that million dollars grows to two million bucks, right? Yes, that might affect your life a little bit. But if you think of it like this, if you have that million dollars goes to two million or if that million dollars goes to 50,000, what is gonna affect your life more? That's where most people invest. They try to get maybe the biggest rate of return, but they don't understand the risks associated with it. So Alan, I truly believe that you wanna take the least amount of risk possible to get you the portfolio that you need to maintain the lifestyle long term. Then you're not freaking out, you don't have the anxiety and everything else that goes along when the markets, when they, when they tumble. Yeah, no question, Joe. And I would say the next thing really has to do with healthcare. And a lot of people think, well, wait a minute, at age 65, I qualify for Medicare, so I don't really have that much health care cost, and that's not really true. In fact, what we're finding is for a 65-year-old retired couple, uh, you have, um, you may need as much as 151000 This is the midpoint. This is half of you will spend about that much, and the 90 percentile is 255000 So some of you are going to need at least $250,000 to be able to cover health care. This is over and above any Medicare premiums, supplemental premiums, and the like. So just be aware that there are costs that you've got to account for. Right. And then I think we have more slides here when it comes to healthcare because it's a significant expense. Now, there's a ton of numbers on this, um, whatever you want to call it. Are you going to read them all? No, I'm not even going to no. come close. What I want you to look at at 2000, right, 16% of uh, someone's total income was going to healthcare. If you look at 2030, it's going to be 35%. That's the point, is that the cost of healthcare is going to increase, so you want to make sure that you're aware of that that is going to take some like 35 percent of your overall income and then the next slide will show the percentage of your income right so lower income individuals are going to have most of their income going to health care the difference between 2000 and 2030 look at that so in the bottom quartile of wage earners or, or, or retirees income 20 percent of your expenses were health care in 2000 2030 it's projected to be 50 percent so this is what we're seeing in each of the categories there's more and more spending required for health care hey we got to take a break um, we're going to come back in just a short second uh, when we do come back we're going to look at all right well here you're going to have fixed income sources such as social security we're going to break it down for you and if you do this right if you claim your social security benefits correctly it could add another hundred thousand dollars of total income to the bottom line over your life do not miss this because it is going to make a huge impact on how you claim your social security benefits the show's called your money your wealth we'll be back in just a quick second Hey, welcome back to the program. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. Joe Anderson here. 
uh, talking about putting together your retirement puzzle. A lot of things that you have to consider today than ever before. Uh, the fear of inflation, what is that going to do with taxes, when it, um, your Social Security claim and benefits, and everything else? You have to put the puzzle together. Uh, we're going to dive into Social Security in just a second, but let's go to the true falls. I should still enroll in Medicare at age 65, even if I'm still employed with full health benefits. Uh, this is a good question, really good question. And um, I would say definitely true, Al. I would too, um, yeah. Even though, here's the deal, it, it really depends on your benefits at your employer. Um, so let's say if I'm 65, you want to go ahead and enroll, even though it's, it might not be your primary insurance. Maybe your primary is still your benefits through your employer. It depends on the employer plan. Maybe they want Medicare to be the primary, they'll be the secondary. So it's always just a really good idea to enroll at age 65 no matter what. You don't necessarily have to as long as you do have full benefits. And then you have to enroll, of course, within a certain time frame after you retire. So it, it's a really good idea. I've seen nightmare stories where people have worked um, in, until age, let's say, 68, 69. They were fully covered through their employer. They retired, but they didn't get enrolled in time through Medicare because they were retired, right? They're going on vacation and doing different things. So it's just really good practice to always enroll at 65. Uh, Alan, we're looking at Social Security benefits. And I think a lot of times people are doing the wrong thing with their claiming strategy still to this day. I think people are not really paying attention to what they should do when it comes to claiming their benefit. Well, they are, Joe. And I would say the first thing is just to understand the basics. So the earliest you can claim Social Security is age 62. And then the normal retirement age is between age 66 and 67, depending upon your date of birth. And the latest date that you can take it is age 70. And you can take it at any point in between, but realize this, that the longer you wait, the higher that benefit will be. And I'll tell you what, now that we are living longer, in fact, the, employer, the Employee Benefit Research Institute recently came out and said that a 65-year-old couple, there's a 50% chance that at least husband or wife will live to age 92. So you want to make sure that you get Social Security claiming strategies right. A lot of you want to claim at 62, but a better strategy might actually be to wait till age 70 in many cases. Yeah, without a doubt, because now you're getting a lot larger increase each year that you wait. So if I wait 62, I receive a 25% permanent reduction on my benefits. Just think of it that way. Do you want a 25% permanent reduction of your benefit if you take it early at 62? Of course, if you need the benefit, take it, right? But if you don't need it, it makes a lot more sense. We've run the numbers many, many times to keep pushing this thing out as long as possible. Most of you are working a little bit longer, right? So keep pushing that benefit out because you're going to be thankful that you have that much higher increase in your benefit when you need it the most. Now, let's dive in a little bit more on, uh, on some of the benefits. Yeah, Joe, a lot of people don't really understand some of the basics on the benefits. So let's take a look at this. How is your benefit calculated? So number one, it has to do with uh, the age that you b begin to collect. And as we mentioned, if you collect at full retirement age, that's kind of your regular level. If you collect early is at 62, it's 25% it's less. If you wait till age 70, it's 32% more. The other thing is really important. It's the average of the highest 35 years of earnings in which you paid Social Security. So if you've only worked 30 years, those last five years are going to be averaged in at zero. If you can get 35 years in, you're going to have a higher benefit. And as we said again, it has to do with if you can wait later, and for many of you, if you can wait till 66, 68, 70, whatever it may be, you're going to be in a, in a much better position. And Joe, I would add one more thing here too, and that is a lot of people don't realize Social Security is actually taxed in many cases. And there's a formula. So it has to do with this, which is your provision income for Social Security. Uh, this is married filing jointly. Different tables for single, but uh, if your provisional income is below 32000 which is as defined as virtually all of your income except for Social Security, you take half of Social Security. You also add municipal bonds to that income. If it's less than 32000 look at this, you don't pay any tax. But if it's between 32000 and 44000 50 percent of your Social Security is taxable. You may be in the 15 percent bracket, so you'd pay 15 percent. Now, for some of you, a lot of you, your income is over $44,000, and 85 percent of your Social Security is taxed. So in many cases, people come to me and say, 
well, you know what, Al, that doesn't really seem fair because we already paid taxes on this money to get into Social Security. I understand, but that's the law and that's how it works, is we do have to pay taxes on our Social Security benefits. Yeah, if you take a look at those numbers, how they calculate it again is this, is that they take a look at half your Social Security benefit. So let's say your Social Security benefit is $30,000, for instance, right? So then uh, 15,000 of that is the starting point. And then if you have pension, interest, dividends, capital gains, uh, 401k distributions, all of that is then added up. And so if it's over $32,000 as a married couple, then 50% of that is now subject to income tax. So that $30,000, boom, $15,000 goes directly on the 1040 and so on. So it, most of you will pay 50 or 85% of that at some point just due to the fact that most of the money that you have is in your retirement accounts, your 401k. So once you start taking distributions on top of your Social Security, that just pushes you up and then more and more of your Social Security is subject to tax. So a lot of tax planning when it comes to Social Security benefits. Al? Yeah, there are. And Joe, I really want to get into creating a tax efficient distribution strategy. And what I, what I have illustrated is different kinds of taxation. And so what you can see is three circles to illustrate that. So first of all, tax free income is going to be the best, obviously. Municipal bonds, did you know that the income on that is tax free? If it's a California municipal bond and you live in California, you're not going to pay any taxes, federal or state. Roth IRAs, that's a big one. If you guys can get some money to Roth IRAs, either by doing contributions or now Roth conversions. Conversions are actually taking some of your tax deferred income, IRAs and so forth, and converting it up here to a Roth. Of course, you have to pay tax on that conversion, but once it sits in this Roth IRA account, all future income, principal and growth is 100% tax free. And then of course a lot of you have what we call taxable investments. These are investments outside of retirement. So this could be stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate. You can get capital gain treatment on this, which for many of you is taxed at a 15% tax rate. So at a 15% tax rate, that's a lot lower than the ordinary income tax rates, which are as high as 39.6. So think about this. Is Many of you are going to have a bunch of your income coming from here tax deferred. This is taxed at these ordinary income tax rates. These are the highest of rates. But if you could also create some of your income from Roth IRAs, municipal bonds, you're tax free there. And if the rest of your income is, is from what we call taxable investments, it's 15%. I would tell you this, you may be living in what would otherwise be a 25% tax rate world, 28% world, but maybe only paying 15% tax because you take just enough out of here to fill up that 15% bracket and the rest comes from here tax-free or here 15%. It's a big deal. If you can save taxes in retirement, your money can stretch a lot longer. Right, and if you do the right planning, guess what? Then uh, some of your Social Security, more of that is tax-free as well. So it all boils down together. It's like putting this puzzle together. You have to take a look at all aspects. We're gonna take a break. When we get back, we're gonna wrap things up and kind of bring point to point of everything we just discussed. And then we're gonna turn it over to you our viewers and take your email questions. It's now on you to email us and we'll ask, uh, answer any questions that you ask us. So don't go anywhere, it should be fun. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. We'll be back in just a minute. Hey, welcome back to the program. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. Putting your retirement puzzle together today on the program. Hopefully you're enjoying it thus far. Hey, uh, let's go to the true false. Let's see how you did here. When I reach full retirement age, I can apply for Social Security benefits and suspend them. This allows my spouse to claim the spousal benefit, which is 50% of my scheduled benefit. And the answer to that is absolutely true. Maybe. <laughs> it, Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? It's well, because true. well, both spouses have to be full retirement age. So no, if, if not, n not necessarily. The younger spouse at age 62 can claim the spouse, so it's just a reduced benefit. But it's going to be the, uh, the <laughs> higher of the two. If she cl claims at 62, Social Security automatically will give her her benefit or the spousal benefit, whichever is larger, if they claim early. I agree with that. So I agree with that. It's but, the best practice to have to do that strategy. I totally agree with what that what you're saying, Al. Is that it, it's best if they're both so, um, full retirement age. Yeah, and because then she gets half of the the um, of the spouse's full retirement age, or he gets half of the spouse's um, full retirement age benefit. Yeah, and I think the takeaway, and a lot of people don't realize, the spousal benefit is 
half of the, of the other spouse's benefit. And you can actually, it, let's say you're both age 66. That's probably the easiest example to say. So one spouse can claim the benefits and suspend them so they don't actually receive them. And the other spouse can get the spousal benefit, which is 50% for four years. And they both continue their own benefits growing. And then at age 70, they can take their full benefits. So it's a great strategy and it works in many cases. Yeah, it's clear as mud. I mean, there's so <laughs> many different complicated rules when it comes to Social Security. You know, wrapping this thing up is we, we wanted to take a look at there's some, some factors. Putting together your Social Security picture or your puzzle is that you have to take a look at market risk. How much market risk are you willing to take? Right? You want to take the least amount of risk possible. We looked at inflation. We looked at Social Security. We looked at taxes, health care. All of these are so important to make sure that your retirement puzzle is put together correctly. You can't just take a look at one or two of these and say, hey, I want to build the best portfolio ever and, not, and ignore taxes or ignore, or ignore health care. So these are the most important. You want to make sure that you put them all together and make sure that you have a plan of action for each of them. Uh, let's go uh, turn the show to you. Let's go to your email questions. Al, what do we got here? Yeah, the first one, Joe, I think is right on point. This is from Susan in Rancho Bernardo. And uh, she says, uh, I'm retired and I've read that I should get out of stocks and switch to safer investments like bonds. But I'm concerned I won't get enough growth to pay for my retirement. What do you think? Well, I think she's on the right track there, right? I mean, you, you want a, a mix of stocks and bonds depending on what target Great. rate of return that you need to generate on the overall portfolio to maintain your income. Um, it, here's something that you might want to take a look at, and this is a big rule of thumb. Um, so, of course, you want to do a lot more planning with this, is that let's say if you need a certain amount of dollars, $10,000 a year um, for income from your portfolio, you at least, in my opinion, want 10 years of very safe fixed income. All right, so if it's $10,000 a year, so you go 10,000 times 10, that's how much money that you want to have in fixed. Because if the markets go up or down over the next 10 year period, who cares? You have the safety valve right there to make sure that you can pull enough income from the portfolio and not worry about market fluctuations. So there's different ideas and different strategies in regards to how you construct your portfolio, but you want to make sure that you do the planning to figure out exactly what that portfolio should look like given your specific situation. Uh, what do we got next? Yeah, number two, uh, Joe is from uh, Jane in Lemon Grove. And she sa asks, if I need to go to a long-term care facility, is it covered by Medicare? Medicare, of course, is the coverage that you can get at age 65. The answer is no, Jane. You've got to pay for your long-term care coverage yourself. That's why there is long-term care insurance that many people get. Uh, we've actually looked at a recent stat. It's about, what, 15 or 17 percent of the people out there have it. So that means the majority don't have it. But no, Medicare does not cover that. Yeah, it might cover just a couple of days, um, but I guess as a general rule of thumb, make sure that you have a, a plan in place. How are you going to cover the cost? Are you going to cover it out of pocket? Are you going to go to the kids? Do you have a long-term care policy? It's very important because it can definitely blow your overall retirement up. Let's go to the last one, and then we got to get out of here, big guy. All right, and this is going to be from Tony in La Costa. And he, he asked this question, or says, I'll be retiring in June. I wanted to know if I should roll my 401k to an IRA or keep it in my employer's 401k plan? That's a million dollar question, isn't it? It is. We did a whole show on this, didn't we? <laughs> it depends. It totally depends. It does. Um, because it depends on a few different things. If you like the plan, you're comfortable with the plan, keep it in the plan. You don't have to roll it out unless it's probably under $5,000 and most employers want you to kick it out. If you work for a large institution, you probably have lower pricing. So then, then you can get on your own. So if you really like this mutual fund inside your 401k plan and you work for a company that has, you know, let's say, three, four, five, ten thousand employees, you probably have really good pricing inside that 401k plan. If you work for a smaller employer, the pricing might not be very advantageous, so you probably want to get the money out. Do you want to do Roth IRA conversions? Do you want to give the money to charity? I mean, there's so many different things that you have to look at to make that decision. It's not cut and dry. Some of you might make sense to keep it in the plan. Others of you might make sense to roll it out into an IRA. If and you Joe, do roll it out, Joe, I would just add there are generally more investment options in an IRA, but I agree with you, it really does depend. Each case is different. Yeah, I mean, more is not always better. True. And sometimes more is a lot better. So it, it, it really depends. That's a million dollar question. Hopefully that helped. It probably didn't help at all. We got to get out of here. Um, next week, we're probably going to talk about longevity, healthcare, taxes, and inflation. So you don't want to miss that. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. We'll see you next week for Big Al Clopine. I'm Joe Anderson.